Hey everyone, welcome to Norm's Workshop. I'm Norm, and today in the workshop, I'm gonna give you eight great tips to help you build your Max and Lily bunk bed faster and easier. If you missed our review of this bed, you can find it in the description below. Stay tuned, because we're getting right into it. Tip number one. These are the things you need to know before the bed even arrives. This may be a detailed project with lots of pieces, but you can definitely do it with basic organizational and do-it-yourself skills. A four millimeter and a five millimeter Allen wrench are included in the box. And the only other tools you should need are a number two Phillips head screwdriver and a rubber mallet. One person should be able to do this assembly in two to three hours, but you will need two people anytime you're lifting the bed. And purchasing the bed is really the only cost associated, so you should be around $600. Tip number two, be ready for arrival day. The bed arrives by truck freight. Be prepared that some drivers tend to be more helpful than others. You're probably gonna to need to help with the lifting and the carrying. If you have stairs, tight areas, pets, etc., they may just drop it at the door and leave the rest up to you. This delivery is huge and heavy. Our bed came entirely in one box. It's about seven feet long, two feet wide, one foot deep and it weighed 135 pounds. When it arrives, you're gonna want a safe and convenient spot to put it in until you're ready to assemble. You don't wanna be moving it around the house if it's in your way. Tip number three, follow all the steps in the assembly manual. Although there are no words or descriptions in the assembly manual, it is full of good illustrations that are well organized and a logical step-by-step -step plan. Make sure you understand each illustration and complete each step before proceeding to the next one. The first few pages show you what parts and hardware are included in the box. There are part number references in a circle for each part and a quantity with an X next to it listed below. There's also an eight digit code shown that I assume is the manufacturer's official part number. The rest of the manual is filled with detailed illustration pages for assembly, and this is a typical page. The primary assembly is in the center with circle close-ups to show specific details. The circle insets will have arrows pointing to the location that it references. There are rectangle boxes that list parts and quantities needed for these particular assemblies. Other rectangles show overall specific details with check marks for correct and X's for incorrect. Most of the pages will also have a hardware image at the top showing the correct screws, nuts, or other hardware needed. If there's similar hardware available that is not to be used, it will show them with an X through. Tip four, unpack. You need to unpack and confirm all the contents before starting assembly. I know you don't want to do it, but you won't be happy in an hour or two if you can't find something. There's over 65 wooden parts and over 150 screws, fasteners, and hardwares in this box. Each of the actual parts or part groups should have a sticker attached that matches the circled part number in the manual. Confirm the parts as you remove them and place them in groups spread out on a large table or floor area. We used our dining room table with a disposable tablecloth on it. When you're ready to confirm the screws and hardware, try not to remove them from their baggies, but do get an accurate count and confirmation that everything is there. Well, now that we're ready to assemble, let's head over to the guest room for the rest of the tips. Well, now we're in the guest room, and this is our Max and Lily bunk bed. We're up to tip number five in our great user tips. Don't forget to remove the stickers. Remove the part number stickers off of each part as you install it. Don't do it earlier because you may forget what part number it is. And if you wait until you're completed the bed, well, you're gonna be crawling all around trying to dig them out. If any adhesive is left behind from this sticker, try to clean it off now. Otherwise, it'll turn into a sticky, dirty circle that'll be there forever. Well, this is tip number six, and it's about the headboards and the footboards. This is one of the trickiest assemblies, so watch closely and follow the steps. The bottom bunk will be different from the top bunk but all the headboards and footboards will follow the same assembly procedure and have the same look. Build all the headboards and footboards on the floor or table as if the inside of the bed is facing upward. 
This should match the illustrations in the manual. The orientation of the top and bottom boards is absolutely critical. The top board has a narrower overhang to the inside and a larger one to the outside. Place the top board on the table narrow side up. The bottom board has four small drill holes near the center. These holes should be facing up on the table. The headboard slats fit loosely into the top and bottom boards. The quantity of slats will depend on the bed size you're building. The left and right legs must be matched up so that the recessed slot for the side rail is facing upward. Press the top and bottom headboard pins into the positioning holes in the side of the leg, and then lightly push or tap the leg into place. Tighten the screws, but be careful not to over tighten. Here's tip seven. All the side rails are exactly the same, but it is easy to accidentally mount them upside down. Mounting the side rails upside down will cause problems when mounting mattress slats and safety rails later on. You need to position the side rails with the ledge to the inside of the bed, and the wider section of side rail will be upward, and then you can fit them into the recess in the headboard. Slide the barrel nut into the hole in the side rail with the slotted side showing, and then thread the long screws in from the outside of the legs. Our final tip is perhaps the most important one of all. It's tip number eight, and it's about top bunk safety rail installation. When installing the side rails on the top bunk, do not fully tighten the screws. The head and footboards will need to be spread just a little bit to fit the safety rails into place. Lightly hammer the dowel pins into both ends of the long safety rails until they bottom out. Push both safety rails into the holes in the legs on both the headboard and the footboard on the back side of the bed. The other side of the bed should be left open for the ladder and the shorter safety rails to be installed later. Now you can fully tighten all those side rail screws. The front partial length safety rail has a post on one end and attaches to the headboard leg on the other end. The safety rail post has a cutaway at the bottom to fit over the side rail. The long side of the cutaway is to the outside of the bed and the short side goes toward the inside side. Attach the rails to the correct side of the post based on your intended ladder position. Set the safety rails and post onto the side rail and line up the dowel pins on the other end to the holes in the headboard. Softly drive the safety rails into the headboard leg using the rubber mallet. Drive them in until they seat flush against the leg. Tap the safety post down to make sure it is flush onto the side rail. Now attach the post to the rail using three screws from the inside. By following the assembly manual in these eight tips, a quality assembly should just be a couple of hours away. You know, I continue to be impressed with the build quality of our Max and Lily bunk bed. It's been used several times with no issues and it still looks great in the room. If this video has been helpful at all, please hit that like or subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching Norm's Workshop.